Hey everybody, uh, welcome to another episode of TFG Radio, the post-LVO episode. Uh, this week I have Danny with me. Hey, hey, hey. And as always on the Wheels of Steel, our butter bar, John. I'm going to be silent, John. <laughs> this episode. Oh, silent. really? Yeah. First real. off, you first off, Nothing you happens, never silent. Nothing happens, there can be silent. Sorry. Completely yeah. uneventful weekend. Nothing to report. <laughs> Nothing at all. So this is basically the uh, annual LVO recap episode. We'll talk about a few other things probably, but that's probably at the end of end of the uh, recap. Uh, we'll go day by day because that seems to be the easiest. Um, I first I first arrived on Thursday. Or, well, Danny and I did th- about the or basically around the same time, but in different cars. Yes. Uh, I came with my brother and my wife, even though my wife was going to stay with her sister. And Danny came with basically the Focus Fire podcast. What? I'm That's never not doing a thing. another episode again. Yeah, I know. I was shocked. That's the old Focus Fire podcast. Yeah. yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, I thought um, we were going to start up again, you know, with a trio this time, but I guess not. <laughs> Nobody brought a recording device for the car? No. I mean, I did hear some great stories about how one, uh, you know, bear maces themselves. Um, that was pretty good. <laughs> Solid. Oh my god. Yep. I can imagine. Yep. Um, but yeah. And so Thursday al- we got in. Yeah, and although although I left like an hour earlier, you you basically got there at the same time because we had to stop for electricity, which will never <laughs> if you're really taking an electric car. That's right. I know. Trust me. I know. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, and I got to see when I was at in, and Adam was checking himself in, and all are getting settled. I went and delivered a care package to Dayton because he was getting tattooed at, at the Rio for his uh, um, AOS team. Really? Really? Shows. They got? I didn't yeah. think that thing was actually open. The tattoo shop there. Yeah, yeah. he did. Oh, yeah. He post he posted on uh, Facebook, Twitter. I forget where he Facebook, posted. Facebook, both, whatever social media. But uh, the guy did good work, and you know it was good to see Dayton, and you know, nice. Seemed to work out for them well, uh, and then yeah, it was a lot of just hanging out with folk. We got uh, we had that's the night we had Korean barbecue, right? And Jeff yes, kept we had trying to Korean slap barbecue. the. We started the weekend with Korean barbecue, <laughs> um, which was with me, me, you, and Jeff. Yeah, with the, where the service uh, just every time gets progressively worse. <laughs> Oh my god! So normally in Korean barbecue, you cook the food yourself. Mm-hmm. Uh, normally, the last time we were there last year, the the servers actually cooked it for us. And for some reason, Jeff would not let them cook for us. It's almost like he like batted their ha- hands away when they tried to reach for the <laughs> for the tongs to uh, flip them flip the food. And I mean, yes, I... the service did get worse as the. As time, yeah, you know, one especially, especially the second time we went. Yeah. With John. Well, that was, yeah. That, that was pretty <laughs> glorious. Although I will say again, I understand why they're hesitant to let people do it themselves because I can only imagine how many drunk people stumble in there and they're yeah. like, here, I'll cook my food. It'll be fine. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I just didn't understand the abruptness of the service in general. <laughs> <laughs> like I couldn't even order a drink. Yeah, you just gave up at a certain point. I did. I was like, like, like you know what? Bad. This is not going to be worth the effort <laughs> at all. <laughs> not worth the effort. I don't care. Whatever. I've been dealing with difficult people all weekend. I don't need this on my free time. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. So Danny and I got there pretty early. John, what time did you eventually come in? Uh, we were to the hotel by nine. Okay. Yeah. We were at the hotel by nine. We flew in. Um, right. We want to try to take an earlier flight next year, if possible. Okay. The only problem is an earlier flight out from LAX, we have to leave work early, and then I don't want to miss any work because I'm already taking off right. two days. But we'll see. Right. Maybe in the future we'll leave a little earlier. Or fly out of Burbank. Natalie won't do that. No? Okay. Short, short runway. She remembers 20 years ago when the one plane went off the end of the runway into the gas station across the street. Oh, yeah. You guys remember that? Are, yep, I do. Yeah. It's because the, the runway at Burbank is shorter. She doesn't like it. Yep. So. 
Okay. Well, uh, Thursday was the GW preview. Um, With the Nerf guns. I didn't think... <laughs> Uh, I didn't think much of it. Oh, man, it was... I forgot to put any of those memes in the rotation. Oh, oh dude, how could you miss that? It was uh, a golden opportunity. Because it's already old news. <laughs> yeah, I'm still recovering. I, I am still recovering. Yeah, we have basically the Devastator Primaris and the Ironclad Redemptor, basically. Airborne so... says he says the GW event felt phoned in. A bit. A bit. Yeah. Interesting. None of it seemed very, uh, like, wow. Mm, it, it didn't yeah. wow me. I mean, the Seraphon stuff was cool. I like new Saurus Warrior sculpts and some new, you know, small lizards riding on big lizards that they're getting in a new I plastic repeat. salon. Hey, there are dozens of us, okay? <laughs> dozens! <laughs> Who cares? I, like <clears throat> I liked the part where leading up to it. Lots of people on the internet are like, we're going to get a preview of 10th edition, and we're going to get a preview of the lion. And I'm like, you guys aren't getting any of that. Nope. Nah. <laughs> they'll, sa- they'll save that for Adepticon. I got yeah. a, I got or one a, of their own I got events. A free... like, you're not yeah. getting that stuff. Warhammer yeah, Fest at the end of April. Yeah, no, yeah. I know, I know. Yeah. I Let's got go. a free drink, though, because of that, because I was talking with people before the thing at, like, the bar, and, uh, you know, they're like, oh, you know, what do you think we're going to see? Do you know? And I was like, no, trust me, man, we ain't going to get cool shit. We're not going to get, like, the, oh, my God. He's like, oh, come on, we're going to get at least one super awesome thing. I was like, no, we're not. And so, you know, after the the thing and they roll back and I see him, I'm like, well, how was it? They're like, all right, man, what you drinking? <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yep. Yeah, it was, was good times. It was very underwhelming. So. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah that, so that happened. Yep. Yeah. But the hall is all set up. We saw pictures of it, of how, what it looked like, all empty and everything. Yep. So, Pristine. I think that that was basically it for Thursday. I mean, we yep. got our dinner. Um, I don't remember much else of it. <laughs> Danny, uh, we have the anything? to we have the to meeting. Yeah, um, and that was fine. And we left and. Uh, yeah, you two yeah. left already. I stayed a little bit to talk to Zach. Yeah. But, well, yeah. I had Natalie with me. She was like, hey, when can we go? Yeah. <laughs> and I didn't I want, like, I didn't want to cause a problem. I was already accused. I was already accused of throwing done up talking. gang signs. So. Yeah. Once Rockner was done talking, I was like, we can go whenever we want. Yeah. yeah. And I was accused so. of throwing up gang signs, so, you know, I just left. <laughs> nah. <laughs> That's because you did. The L and the A is like not a gang years. sign. Yeah, it's an old. It's an old one. No, it's not. It is. It is. No, it's not. Los Avenitos Fifty Two from Highland Park. No. Oh, there's a. You don't know this. This is. I do. This I is do. a I classic like LA thing. <laughs> <laughs> but then it became, you know, just what you do at Dodger games. So it's fine now. Yes. Right. Yes, we culturally appropriated it. You guys are welcome. So something else that's been uh, gentrified. <laughs> yeah, exactly. it's the they gang just... sign. The gentrified <laughs> gang sign. Perfect. <laughs> Amazing. Nothing, nothing encapsulates Los Angeles better than that. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Dayton says that every time he sees Danny, he just assumes he's in a gang. I mean, that was a lot of my early life, to be sure, of that assumption. I just feel uh, like this is a very Canadian thing to say. Do you guys well, even have Americans, gangs in Canada? So. Mounties, Sierra do they games. count? I don't know. Mounties don't count. Nothing encapsulates Los Angeles better than gang signs or gentrification. No, the gentrification. Why not both? <laughs> it's, it's, the, it's the gentrification of gang signs. That's yeah. that's L.A. right okay. there. Yeah. yeah. Ah, so uh, it's, it's home. Yeah, the rest of so Thursday night I was just hanging out and drinking and gambling. Yeah, so. a lot of drinking. That's yeah. essentially what it was, yeah. Yeah. Okay, then we go to the, the big show, day one. So day one... Uh, 962 players to start. It was a bit crowded. Mm-hmm. To say the least. We had to move people to another room. Uh, when Apparently when Frontline was talking about the 1,200 tickets, they meant 1,200 total, which includes AOS. Mm. There were 1,050 tickets sold for uh, 40K and 900, 1,050, 962 round one, which so that's essentially a 
a one percent drop off, which is unheard of and totally yeah. unexpected. Yeah, the attrition rate was insane in the sense of normally, you know, we have a ten to fifteen percent attrition rate. Like last year, because of Omicron, yeah. we had almost twenty. Mm-hmm. Right, we're still yeah. huge. We're still like eight hundred some players, but like, yeah. um, you know, <clears throat> this is the first time since we've done it where the attrition rate has been sub five percent. Like that's just yeah. insane. It's never under five percent for anything that big, any events that yeah. big. Yeah, it's, that's right. it's unheard of. It's insane. And then what Sigmar, did Sigmar have? They had th- about three hundred players, and only two didn't show up. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Yeah, three hundred tickets now, yeah. sold and two people don't show up is absolutely insane. Yep, yeah. LVO now is just collecting those uh, infinity gems because uh, besides having the world's largest 40K. single forty k event, they have the world's largest single AOS event now. Yep, we got to find out about the other game systems. I bet they've set records for those too. I'm sure they uh, have. a lot of them were pretty big. Yeah, I mean, Kill Team grew a hundred percent from last year. Yeah, Those we have. We should find out about hard. like Star Wars Legion and stuff too. It's a huge Legion. event. Like, there's so yeah. many people there. It's ridiculous. MCP, I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, Song of Fire and Ice. Yeah, yeah. I think, I think they have the record for a fair few amount of systems at this point. Yeah. I mean, it's Vegas. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we had an overflow room, which yeah. uh, was not ideal, but it is what it is. Hey, at least there were tables that we could put people on to play. That was my yep. Yeah, it only yeah, lasted two rounds, and after two rounds, we were all in the same room. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, yeah. Because the drops actually, I feel like, happen faster this time. Because usually we don't get the wave of drops until round three, and the waves of drops started in round two. Yeah, yeah. Like there were just a lot of people after round one. It's like, cool. I I lost my game. I'm done. And it's like, ooh, so, okay. So Dayton's <laughs> saying there's actually 328 players for Sigmar. That sounds. Right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say t- he's. I'm gonna say he's wrong because that's that's Canadian math, and it's a little <laughs> more than U.S. math. This actually sounds right because they only had tables for 300. I remember they were scrambling to make tables. Yeah, they. Yeah. T- I think they took one of our tables. That's why one of our tables disappeared. Yeah, and then um, we had two tables that disappeared. Yeah, it's fine. I'm sure those people had fun out. playing on uh, FLG 40k terrain. <laughs> I think they had the terrain. They just needed the physical tables. I mean, look, what is it? Kicker had to like run out and steal it from somewhere to get us just a judge's table day one, where we actually had a table yeah. where we could congregate rather than on the <laughs> stairs of the stage. <laughs> yeah. It was big. So, that was the biggest issue the entire event. It was just big, yeah. I mean, if we continue at this rate next year, that we have 40K will have to have a whole haul to itself, nothing else, right? Right. And Age of Sigmar will need to take a, you know, giant chunk of another, of the uh, second largest haul, right? Yeah. I mean, it's going to be, <clears throat> it's going to be gnarly because, you know, I mean, 40K, we can talk about, do we need to grow or not? But AOS will keep growing, I'm sure. Yeah. Well, they have, so. the, they have the room cap. We don't really have... I mean, if we get to 1,200, we've got to do the cut to the top 16, like a hard cut to top 16. Yeah. So they all play, that, that group plays around 7 on right. Saturday, and then they come back, the winners come back Sunday morning. So instead right. of a shadow round, it's a legit cut to 16. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, Score high. That, score that, high. <laughs> that's what we'd have to go to. So Winners win and score high. Yeah, right. uh, day one there weren't any other issues, right? It was just that. I mean, there were issues there's, with terrain because there's terrain some some random pieces missing. of terrain, and and some of them didn't quite match the packet. So we yeah, I mean that was the that. biggest thing was there was a lot like the newest Sisters of Battle, I think it is mm-hmm. terrain set yep. wasn't in the packet, so which we had to kind I of just scramble. blamed everybody as it doesn't need to be because it's played as is. Right. Because it's actually made with no windows on the bottom. Right. It's made so that you cannot create any magic boxes. They all have open an open side or two. Right. So there was nothing to explain. It was it was and it was all ruins. Yeah, I know. But it just uh you know, it it's easy it's yeah. much easier to have like the packet yes. and point to it and be like, if, Hey, yeah. you know, here's the key. Mm-hmm. 
Um, if, and then there's if just all the other books are, or all the other terrain sets are in there. It should be. Yeah, I think day one I did the most running around just trying to find terrain because I don't know how it, well, I know how it happens is usually people move stuff to put their army down or do whatever and terrain gets damaged or it gets lost, you know, gets lost or it gets shuffled onto another table. But I had to f try and fix so many tables that were missing terrain or terrain started breaking and it's just like, guys, if you're going to <clears throat> a big tournament, don't mess with the terrain, please. It's such a hassle for everybody involved. Please don't. Please don't mess with the train. It was really well, annoying. That... More importantly, don't break the train. We had one or two yeah, tables no. where the train was totally smashed. Yep. Yeah, and it was like obviously smashed. Yeah. Because it was more than one piece. Yep. So. Uh, Snake Oil Services wants to know if uh, we have any problems with New Zealanders. No. Were there any Kiwi? kiwis? There? I love kiwis. I They're delicious. I don't. I don't recall meeting a kiwi. Yeah, I don't recall there being any there. <laughs> I mean, there might have been. I just I might not have had any contact with them. But you know. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't remember um, talking to any. I mean, I remember messing with uh, with Matt M um, was solely, and uh, mostly it was Seth calling him a kiwi, trying to start that bloodshed. Which luckily Matt was kind enough to not, <laughs> to not yeah, get they, into. Yeah, they don't like that. <laughs> no, not at all. No. It's a real quick way to start a fight, for sure. <laughs> uh, but, other day know. one issues or anything notable for day one? I don't think there was. Not really. Uh, just the, just the shuffling people over to the uh, other room. That was basically yeah. it. Yeah. And, um, and I had a lot of questions about the WTC FAQ when it comes to charging and, you know, one inch, blah, blah, blah. Which is a lot of just walking people through. About that. I had like seven or eight and it was always kind of the same question, which is, wait, I know we can do this, but I don't understand how. Right. Yeah. And so it was just yeah. walking them. It was just walking them through, mm -hmm. which I get because it wasn't anybody about this way. I don't think any of those people I talked to ended up in the uh, upper tables right during the course of the event so i think it's just again people who probably don't play in tournaments a lot who have like really no no tangible understanding of the difference between like a wtc ruling versus like you know an flg or a gw ruling right mm -hmm. so it was just my you know, kind favorite. of holding people's hands through it <laughs> yeah my favorite question came from day one which was, which my was? opponent has a rule that makes me fight last do i have to fight last <laughs> yeah that that popped up a, a couple like, of times you don't it's not an option guy <laughs> yeah i mean part of it too was hard was um you know there were a couple of times people would be like hey but my codex says this and that's different than always fights last and i have to get out the faq and the designer's notes and being like look anything that yeah. kind of sounds like this is treated as it's, this it's right treated like, as this, yeah. <laughs> yeah and they're like oh yeah. And I was like, yeah, you can't use raw on this one, unfortunately. Right? Like, this has been right. clarified in the design. Get around it. Yeah. Which, you know, they had to do because I don't... And they're, we're not going to have USRs anymore. But here's a bunch of USRs. And now we need to treat them like USRs to make our game work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because God would you USRs. copy and paste the same wording. Yeah. So Snake Oil Services says that there are five Kiwis, but... I mean, I, we didn't. We I didn't run into cause any problems. They must be so. fine, polite gentlemen and women. Yeah, I mean, I would have been happy actually to to meet any of them since uh, I enjoy meeting our players, who especially players who travel very far, and like I would have loved to talk to them and buy them a beer. Like, you know, that's the thing. If you're at LVO and like you traveled considerable, like again, you crossed an ocean, you should just tell me that because if I know you're doing, you know. If I know you traveled that far, I'd probably at some point buy you a beer. Just be like, hey, thanks for coming. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, I don't think there were any other day one issues once we got everything sorted. Um, towards the end of the day, we started doing ranked tables with game three. Yeah. Yes. Uh, just to start keeping an eye on people. Um so day one was fairly standard, considering no issues with BCP, no issues with just the issues with tables. 
BC, you know, again, to its credit, you know, credit where credit's due, that's two for two with BCP of running and doing everything we needed to, right, and being stable. The only weird thing with BCP was they removed the self pin um, portion. And just well, you could only score your own games, which was fine, but it would have been nice to know that before the event. <laughs> what, yeah, what I don't know they why that setting me... wasn't used, but yeah, they said they said that when the when the event was created, the self pin was not clicked over, and once you start the game, once you start the tournament, or once they check in without doing their pin, you can't go back to it. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, so we well, just need to make it's sure. not really a big deal. So the default, I think, is to let them self-score, but without the pin. Right. But we just oh, got to make sure that thing is flipped over before uh, mm-hmm. anyone checks it. Yeah. Because it appears to have caused issues over the course of the tournament with people changing their scores. BC, BCP said that's not possible, but I can only go by what players are telling me. I don't know. So. I mean, there are a lot of people who come up and be like, hey, my score was wrong, but it wasn't... I only had one person who was like, my score changed overnight, and... Yes, we had a couple of those. Yeah. So, I don't know. <clears throat> <laughs> Who's to say? Um, but um, no, I mean, I think besides the overflow room, day one ran pretty... about as well as you could ask for a super massive, almost quadruple digit event. <laughs> Yeah, almost a thousand yeah. players. Yeah, it was yeah. very smooth. Yeah, for almost a thousand um, players. Yeah, uh, that night we did have our super secret dinner. Oh god, it was so good! Everyone opted to do the premium tasting menu, so we got our uh, which is nice. But I'll never do that again. <laughs> what? Yeah, <laughs> we should try that other place next year. Well, oh, what is it? Um, I'm already, It's herbs and what? Herbs and rye. Herbs and rye, yeah. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd like saving some money. Although I still might go on my own then. <laughs> Just on <laughs> <your> own. <laughs> I might do that. Sure, like, uh, I might do that Thursday night then. Be like, yeah. I'll be back later, guys. I'll be back <laughs> in a couple <laughs> hours. Don't know. We like, it's called Jose Andres. What is it? Bizarre Meats? Bizarre Meats, yeah. Yeah. At the SLS, which apparently we learned is, <clears throat> after every UFC fight, is Joe Rogan's favorite place to go. Is where he goes after every <laughs> weigh-in. Yeah. So, there you yeah. go. Because um, he yep. has the money to just eat as much as he wants there. Oh yeah, the former SLS. It's the Sahara again. Yeah, that's right. It's the Sahara again. But um, and it is nice. They're they're retrofit and everything. It is much nicer. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that is uh, that place is amazing. With you know, we got Wagyu, and they even give you the uh, certificate. <laughs> they, give, they give you the certificate yes. of authenticity. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna frame mine. Yeah, with like. Who raised it? When was it? When, when, when was it harvested? When was it harvested? Yeah, it says the, harvested. It was har- my favorite part about that you harvested. Yeah, <laughs> my favorite part about was that they bring you the wagyu and they bring you your thing, and then when you're done, they bring an additional meat out. <laughs> yeah, they bring another steak. <laughs> they bring one more. There's still one more steak. It's like another one. The big steak. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the wagyu. The wagyu is just for tasting, right? Like, right. It's for tasting. Um, then they bring you the actual steak. <laughs> And the mashed potatoes. <laughs> yeah, John says his was slaughtered on February 14th on Valentine's Day, 2022. That's was mine too. Yes, yeah. that's mine, yeah. Because why so, uh, aged, right? Yeah. 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 That's why it tasted so good. <laughs> yeah. So that was uh, Friday. Friday, uh, mm-hmm. Day two. Uh, players tend to get a bit more, well... Towards the end of the day, they get a bit more chippy because we're heading into the final, um, the final rounds. We still had a lot of players. We had some draws on day one, but it wasn't enough to to cut the numbers of undefeated by too much. Mm-hmm. Um, John did have wording in the packet that it's true undefeated that we're going to go through the yes. shadow round. Not uh, yep. no there draws. was one five zero and one player that was kind of nope. didn't make the cut. Not true undefeated. I had to hear about it from other judges uh, for the rest of that afternoon because they wouldn't be quiet about it. As I, I mean, well, I, as it's I in the packet. Me, it's I know. literally in the packet. True and undefeated, I'll, I'll, meaning, and I even define what I mean by it. Yeah. I even define so, true undefeated, meaning. I'll say six it one wins, more time. No draws. Winners win. Right. Like, that's, it's too big to do it any other way. Like, that's just the reality. I mean,. Yeah. When it was, we had a smaller event, then yeah, you could justify like giving people who got, you know, 
a high tie and things like that a chance to like get in but when you have over 900 players right like it's just well we ended up with 15 with 15 undefeated and so one the first place player got the bye and then we had the other 14 do the show so we had seven tables Mm -hmm. like I said if we hit what is it 1100 or 1080 or 1056 it's 1056 if we hit 1056, it's going to just be a cut, cut to the top, like I was saying yeah. earlier. The shadow yeah, round won't even 16. be a shadow round anymore. It'll literally just be a seventh round. Yeah, we'll have round ten. We'll have ten rounds essentially. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, basically, that, the that Sunday, functions the, in BCP. Even. Right. You you click the eh. cut to top sixteen. Yeah. Oh, and, do a top it, cut with the sixteen. Yeah, that's what. That's literally what that is. You, you cut to the top yeah. sixteen at that point, and they all play the seventh round on Saturday and they'll play a full game three days on Sunday. Yeah, I was you gonna don't say need the, the shadow the, round because everybody's playing it. Right. I was going to I was going to say that means the su- the Sunday part of the tournament will start Saturday night. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so so it'd be, it be it would be easier to do the cut then we don't have to do the the wonky like Yep. Like mm-hmm. what happened with with what ended up happening was a lot of the bottom seeds won their games. Yeah, they made championship seeding pretty pretty annoying <laughs> after this shadow round yeah. so if we just do a straight top cut then it yep. makes a bcp yeah, it takes easier. care of itself yeah yeah that would be nicer yeah then i well, have to always... add that language to the packet though i'll need yeah. to add that so shadow round or cut to the top yeah depending if there's x amount of players though yeah no if there's x amount of undefeateds yeah if there are 16 undefeateds it's not a shadow round it's a cut to the top 16 yeah. Well, six. Yeah, because yeah, sixteen or more. Because depending on what numbers we get next year, we could, there could be yeah. more than sixteen undefeated. Sure. Yeah. Then the, I mean, that's the the even harder part is uh, then you just you, you're gonna knock out sixteen, you know, six and O's from competition, you know, from being able to even go into the top cut because they just didn't score high enough. Yeah. But yeah. I mean, that's I mean, how, there's no other way to do this other than making this yes. just insanely long. Because right. when it gets to that many, there, there's no longer a potential for a shadow round. It has to be a cut to it. Yeah. So. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, day two is when people start to get chippy. And they start to yep. try hard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, try hard's got to try hard. <laughs> one of the things that definitely came up, I think it was round five, was I walked over to a table. And the players were arguing about the scoring of the game. Mm-hmm. And they'd removed all their models. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and already scored the game in BCP. And I oh. walk up and these guys are arguing and they're not being entirely polite with one another. And I'm like, what do you guys... Because they called for me. And they're like, I'm like, what do you need? And they're like, well... He's like, well... I, they both start talking over each other immediately, right? <laughs> I'm like, okay, slow down. What? I don't understand. Well, he's saying... I'm saying he couldn't have possibly scored this thing. And I'm like, scored what thing? There's no models on the table. And he's like, well, he right. couldn't have scored this secondary on turn five. And I'm like, okay, did you score it in BCP? Yes. And you've now removed all the table models from the table? Yes. There's nothing I can do about it. Yeah. You agree to the score yeah. when you put it in. There is no documentation of anything that occurred. It's literally just you saying something and him saying something. And what do you want me to do? And that was kind of a recurring theme after round five. Yeah. Where I mean, I s- games are over, you've literally scored it into BCP, and then you're trying to come change your score with me, and I can't see the game state. I have to just go off of he said, she said. Yeah. But I can't do that. I'm not going to turn over a game result because you're saying something more forcefully than the other person. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I have that. And this uh, what kind of bothered me about it was neither guy was undefeated. So I'm like, why do you have to care this much? Right? Like, you know, <laughs> like, seriously, like, you're not going to go to the shadow round. Like, it doesn't matter. But, you know, the guy's argument is like, you know, well, no, I, I should win. Luckily, they had not taken their models off the table. And, like, one of the guys was, like, packing up some of the models on the side. And I was like, no, no, stop touching anything. And I was like, okay, what happened? He's like, well, he is like, I did this. He's like, he didn't do that. He didn't. He's like, that's absolutely not what happened. He didn't do that. He didn't score that point. He's not going to win. He's not going to complete that secondary. And like, you know, I let both of them kind of vent for a second. I was like, okay, 
this is the end of the game, and I look, I'm like, well, measuring out, the only reason you would put these models here is to score the secondary. Like, there's no other reason for these, like, five blood letters to be next to this demon prince that's going to kill them. Next, You know, mm-hmm. if they, you know, like, you said you did it. He's like, he didn't. He's like, I, and the guy was like, I said it. I don't know if he didn't hear me or whatever, but, I, like, I said it. I was like, I'm going to assume every creature here is logical and that you moved here to do this, so... You said you score it, like, this is what the game state looks like, right? Like, there's nothing preventing them from doing this, therefore, it is likely this happened, right? Assume everyone's a rational actor. I even told them, like, this is my best estimation of what happened because you guys are, you know, expecting me to go back in time and understand what the hell you're doing. Right? And they're both started getting a little chippy again. I was just like, or I can just double loss you guys. What do you want? Right? That's also equally fair. And up to my discretion, they're like, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Just like, yeah. Please please don't argue with each other. Yeah. Round six. Yeah, th- <laughs> there no, was, it was round um... five again. Round five again, there was a guy who... Uh, I walk over to the table, and they hadn't packed anything away. But he's like, this one guy's like, you literally can't have done that. And he's like, well, you literally can't have smited that model. You can't see it. And he's like, I can see it. There's a window at the top. I can, it's a big model I can see down and he's like at what angle can you see that and so I was like well this is easy to check right <laughs> let me see and I was like yeah there's you, you can't possibly have seen that model to smite well that wins him the game and I'm like well you did an illegal action <laughs> like you, you literally did something you couldn't do he's like but you are cha-, he's like but you are deciding the game and I'm like no I'm, I'm not deciding the game you guys called me over because you're arguing about the end of the game, and he's telling you you couldn't have smited to do this. And he's right. You can't smite. You were rolling this out at the end of the game, right? You were rolling your last turn. Yeah, we're rolling our last turn. Okay, so in the process of rolling your last turn here quickly, you made an error and tried to smite something you literally can't see. So, um, you know, and I think this is indicative of what K.R. Quinn's saying. Which is it's uh, scoring is the issue. The get it's overly complicated to keep track of and meticulous. Like the, the oh, yeah, this is the this has been the problem with the missions this entire edition. Scoring is too difficult. You know, when the ITC had its own missions, all the secondaries were the same. Everybody had played them all season. Everybody knew how to score them. The primary, primary was, was the same. The primary was simple. Kill one, kill more. Hold one, hold, hold one, more. Hold more. Mm-hmm. You know, it was... Uh, it, they're just... I'm sorry, but they're just not good missions, in my opinion. And it, and when you've got this huge event, and people are constantly making mistakes scoring the mission, and then you get people who are like, oh, well, the scoring should be done by the judges. And I'm like, okay, one, one no. Players are... <laughs> part of the game is literally to score your game. That's part of playing the game is keeping score. Right. This isn't pro sports. If it's pro sports, then you shouldn't be allowed to drink, and we should drug test you. Oh, my God. It's well, not it's pro sports. The... <clears throat> it's not right. pro sports. See, and you don't, get a, 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 you don't get somebody to keep the books for you. Plus, but what sport do you know of that's as hard to score as this? I mean, also, to be fair, with like scoring and professional sports... Um, there are there's a separate group of people who score and keep score versus people who adjudicate rules, right? This is the right. difference between a referee right. and a judge, right? <clears throat> so, like, in boxing, the referee, the actual person in the ring who is responsible for controlling the legality of the fight, they don't ever score points. They can take points away, but they're not the ones scoring. That's the ringside judge's job. Right. right, they're the ones who actually keep track of it. In football, the sideline referees aren't the ones keeping score. Right, there's a whole separate referee crew who's watching the game from up top who keeps score. Right, in baseball, that's literally a position is the scorekeeper, which is different than the umpire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Um, so if you're, you know, now you're acting like, you know, oh, well, someone should do it for them. Like, fine, then you need to increase staff. Because you need to have someone who's really just, who is a, a, a scorekeeper, and that's a very specific skill set and a very different job. They shouldn't, no one, <clears throat> no player should be talking to them and being like, hey, how do you, you know, is this or this? Like, their entire job is to focus on, did you legally do that? Right? Did you legally score those points? Cool. That's official points. And then also, because we've done this before, 
we have kept score for people's games before where suddenly there's a discrepancy between our scorecard and a player's personal scorecard, what they're keeping track of, and it opens that whole can of worms of, well, if there's a judge keeping score, a referee, their word becomes law, whether it's a mistake or not, right? Right. And that doesn't feel good for players to be like, oh, I really thought I was up three more points than I was. Yeah. Right? And like... And then somebody else is trying to make the point that like, oh, well, there, there's there's like money on the line. And I'm like, okay, well, the PGA Tour has way more money on the line than the LVO. And what? PGA Tour golfers keep their own score, sign it, and turn it in. And when they make mistakes, which they have, it costs mm-hmm. them. There's the, there's a couple of cases of, like, there's even a major. Where I think it was, in, it was in the 1970s. But there was a major that got lost by a guy who did, didn't record his score correctly. Sergio Garcia, it happened to him like seven years ago, I think. Didn't sign a scorecard or did something illegal with the scorecard, and that was that. Out. Yep. Like, in some things, you are responsible for it. You have to keep your score. Yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, and it, and it it's, comes it's, down it's to, rough. Yeah, and it comes down to this is too complex. Complicated. Yeah. You have primary. You have the primaries. Secondary, Secondary. Yeah, primary yeah. bonus, right? Yeah. So primary, primary bonus. Um, then you've got uh, secondary, and eight, everybody's secondary is different. And then you could have like your faction secondary, and so there's this huge amount of bloat. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely these missions are ridiculous. Uh, just, I mean, from a game design standpoint, you can see like, oh, this mission's really good at forcing people to scrum. This mission's really good at forcing people to break off and like, you know, punish castles. Mm-hmm. And like, that's all well and good. But like, the dyed in the wool part of it is, okay, you you achieve this, but it's overly complex. If you, it would be a better system. You could still achieve the same goals if you streamlined it down to where it's not so complex to keep score, right? Because it's just it's mind boggling how easy it is to forget about things, especially because you score points at different parts of every turn. So it's like, okay, cool. On the second turn, you score points on your primary at the very beginning, and then you score the bonus at the end, and then you have your secondaries that score at the end. Then you have your secondaries that score at another part of a turn, and then you've got secondaries that are scored Mm -hmm. at end of game, right? Like, so it's not even like, this is complicated. It's like, no, like literally, when do you score points officially yeah. varies between every game and every player. <laughs> That's an extremely good point. Even scoring doesn't happen at the same time for everything. That's a really good point. Yeah, it's it's hard to keep track of. Like I've scored games for people and like it is really hard to do that effectively when they're also asking me questions, right? Yep. Yeah. That's why <laughs> And I'm also that. trying to watch for like sloppy or bad play, right? Yeah. See, I I won't t- I won't keep score for them. I will check your well, score at the end. I will go over your score at the end, which is something that happened round six, which we can talk about right. in a second. But I will, I'm not keeping score for you. That's your job. Remember, it was like it was a couple of LVOs where at the top table where you were judging, and like me and Adam would have to swap in and out as basically the table boss as the person like writing down everything, and that was a that was a nightmare. Because yeah. oh, if you yeah. wanted to converse with us, we literally had to stop the game so I could like take my eyes off of what was happening scoring wise, mm-hmm. right, and be able to like converse with you. Yeah. Um, and even and when that happened, like there was still every time someone would be like, "Okay, so that's two points." I'd have to like look them in the eye and be like, "So that's two points for engage on all fronts, right?" Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah. It's like, okay, you have to verify with me. And it just became a huge hassle because then it be at one point they're like, wait, I thought I had six. And I'm like, nope, this is what I have and I'm not changing it. Right. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. And, I think yeah. the FLGN uh, table, the finals, they had someone that kept track of the scores. They but had the, somebody who kept track of the score for the stream, but that was not right. the official score. And stream scores have definitely been wrong before where they're not yeah. updated right. They're not updated correctly. Mm-hmm. They're, no, um, for for the for the on stage table, I believe it was. No, it was not. The players okay. were keeping score. At least the mm. two of the ones I and watched the, were. No, the I, I think they. Was... I think when, when because they had to update the board, so I guess maybe well, they I just asked the player, that. checked with the players what the score was, and then updated. The yeah, board. But they, yeah, that's what. They yeah, they weren't they were score checking. keeping. Yeah, they weren't score keeping. They were just literally up being able to update the board. 
right? But they weren't like double checking their math, right? They weren't keeping their own running tally, right? And comparing it to what the players had, right? Yeah, I right? never. Literally just... But still, that's still more yeah. or less double checking with with like the, like you know like because said, they just Danny, took them at this, their word. This that's is not double checking want. if all you're doing is recording down the, exactly what they tell you. That's that not that checking. doesn't matter because you're confirming with the player that that's what they want to score. And that, that like Danny said, this is what you told me your score is, so this is what it is. Yeah, but I mean, like, it's one thing does, even, if it's, even if it's confirming yeah. what the, what you're going to put on the board. Well, that's that comes down to like the whole somebody's saying in here, like they were surprised at how many people were content to let one person in the game score. Oh my god! And so yeah. the, the, there's an issue with that, which is <laughs> like, if you're going to do that, then you don't get to argue about the score later, right? Like, you seed your you seed your control of the score, or, and like so, there was a game where I watched most of it, round six. There was there was one judge there the entire time, for sure, and then and then at one point there were three, one of which was me, <laughs> and. It came down to a point where, like, one person was basically bidding for, like, all kinds of stuff, and we had to put a stop to it. And this is a game where only one score sheet was being kept. And at the end of the game, the player who had been bidding to basically, like, anything to try to win the game was like, no, I don't think the score is 84-82, let me see it. And they took the score sheet, and then they asked for the pen. Because it was a dry erase. <laughs> and I was like, no. No, 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 no. We'll go over the score together. That's fine. Let's put it down. Put it down in the middle where everybody can see it. And I have a calculator here on my phone. And we'll go through it. And I went line by line and confirmed the score for every single thing with them. And added it up. And it was 80-42. But, like, I, th- and this is the thing with not only the missions, but, like, the way it's scored. And it's like, and then at the end of the game, you're going to try to plead a case for you should have more points or your opponents should have less, but you spent the entire game agreeing to the score at every point along the way. Right. It, it needs to be simpler. No, it absolutely does. Yeah, because <clears throat> yeah, uh, like you said, the uh, like there was a, I think it was round six game between uh, two players and they had said it was tied and then they started to talk it out and they had put the score in already mm. or one of them was down by one or two and then they started to talk it out and it got to the, and there was still time enough time left and it got to the point where it was like you know what let's just play it out so they ended up playing it out and the score flipped after they had mm. already turned the score in hmm. oh yeah yeah <laughs> so okay. that's the one thing I'll say that happened a lot and it didn't just yeah. happen on day like two. There was a lot of talking out games where, you know, people are like, oh, okay, this is really what's going to happen. Then they agree. And then it becomes that, well, you agreed to the outcome of this, but you're talking it out. Why, why don't you just play and see what happens? Right. Right. Like there's just like, it, it seemed like more than normal. There was a lot more just like, yeah, we can just have a conversation and hash this out right now. I think it's a I think it's a, a a mind game for for many people's and certain players where they do that and convince the the, uh, the opposing player that you're going to lose because this is what's going to happen you can't stop it. Right. Um, I know for myself as a player I I do talk it out, but usually if I'm losing and I don't and I want to go to lunch. <laughs> yeah, when it's a foregone conc- it's one thing when it's a really clear foregone conclusion. It's another thing when there's, you know literally three or four turns left to play right that yeah. happened in the shadow round where two players like finished out like talked it out at turn two because they're well, like well i can't win anymore and here we go and it's like and i'm sitting there the entire time listening to them go through it and being like so you both agree to this mostly the person yeah. losing they're like yeah whatever i'm like whatever it's a shadow round like you really well let's do this fine, let's but. move on from there then so so that the, what we just talked about happened a lot in especially rounds five and six, um, and not just at the top tables either. Even the mid and lower tables, it was happening because um, it's you're already playing your sixth game and it's a long night. Most of them realize they're not going to make it to the shadow round, and they still had Sunday to uh, to play if they're playing the RTT or the long word doubles. Uh, shadow round, we end up with seven tables. 
between myself, Danny, and uh, Thomas, who are judging the events. The game Danny described, I actually, I kind of agree considering the two armies that were playing. It was Thousand Sons versus Blood Angels. Right. And the way they they both had castles, and the mission was... What was the mission, Danny? Do you remember? Um, it's the second to last one. What is that? Um, it's the corner deployment, basically. Yeah. And both of them had put their castles in each corner. And uh, I believe Jack had mentioned that he had built his list to, de- to definitely counter a list like the Thousand Sons that's playing yeah. duplicity and has a bunch of deep striking stuff because he took the... Is it infiltrators? The ones that have the twelve inch bubble? Yeah. So he had infiltrators basically zoning out mo- most if most if not most of the board basically. And then wherever he the Thousand Suns player did land, it was easy for the Blood Angel player for Jack to just get there and annihilate whatever unit happens to go there. Right. And so Wait. even so them just sitting there. Uh, Jack would have won anyway because he so I, I can see them talking it out in that case because there's really no point in playing in playing that game if it's already a, if there's if if and I mean yeah I, I don't I've played Thousand Sons as everyone knows for like nine months and those 12 that 12 inch deny is very hard to overcome usually and especially if it's Blood Angels uh that can just uh, assault the shit out of you <laughs> and kill anything you get within striking distance. So that that one, I can see why they just kind of mapped it out because none of them was going to none of them were going to move out of their deployment zone. They all both admitted oh, no. that. <clears throat> oh, I know. I mean, that's part of me. What proved to me, ninth edition is in a terrible freaking place when you can play a turn and be like, well, unless hard skew happens. Right. Um, oh, this yeah. is the this is this is the game, right? Like it's been solved. The equ- you know, as we always say, the equation has been solved. Oh yeah, for sure, the right. equation was solved, and the the new mission pack is not doing anything to help that. The, it it just adds in a different variables in terms yeah. of the secondaries, but the equation itself is done. You plug in a different variable, a different number. It, it, it's it, yeah. It's, I mean, the only real change in arcs is you can do more crazy skewless. So you're, the likelihood that you run into just some random BSQ list that hard counters you is a little bit higher. But again, the top level players know how to counter that anyway. Like you're still not going to beat them, right on a head to head. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, but then other than that, the other uh, the other shadow rounds went fairly well. Um, didn't seem too bad. No, I mean at that point everyone's everyone's tired, but yeah. you know it's one of those things of. Generally, if you made it that far, you're you know a good player, right? Like you deserve to be there, um, and you know you know that's like it's not worth, especially because at the end of the day, a lot of those guys in the shadow round are people who have some kind of income stream dependent on their ability to play 40k, and the last thing they mm-hmm. want to do is suddenly be like, oh yeah, I got bounced out of the shadow round for sloppy play or arguing or whatever, right? Like, yeah, yeah, that hurts their brand. It's true. It does hurt their room. Yeah, it, it it was probably the most chill shadow round we've had in a while. <laughs> uh, in the last few years, anyway. So Saturday night, we were we had our the our top eight uh, going into Sunday. Um, uh, first round, we had uh, Demon's Mirror. Uh, we had what were the it was Demon's Mirror, Tau and Harlequins. Uh, then uh, was it Emperor's Children and Tau? And Emperor's was Children one? played played orcs. No Emperor, no Emperor's Children played. Didn't they Tau. play Naden? Didn't Jay play Naden? That was in the next round. Ah. wasn't it? I don't remember anymore. No, no, I'm pretty sure Jay round? played Naden. I can't remember. Yeah. It's all a big blur. No, um, <laughs> no, Jay, Jay, could, no. Jay played no, Nassim in the shadow round. Yes, so he played. Yeah, because he played Nate in, in the. Uh, so that's what it was. Yeah, it was Emperor Children's Orcs, uh, Demons Mirror, Tau Harlequins, and then uh, Tau. 
Tyranids? No. Oh, no, Nids made it to the top eight. Can't remember who the last one was. I know, I wasn't there for round, for round seven, so, yeah, <laughs> or I whatever. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good story. Uh, oh, crap, I can't remember now. I, I couldn't well, remember. You can look at BCP. Oh, well, I'm looking uh, at right So that round went... Uh, the demon, demon demon mirror went to the wire because they each it was not a body and Marisol uh, Marisol and uh, Matt and uh, they had the exact same list they did their player place terrain the exact same way and they put put the exact same units into uh, reserve <laughs> <laughs> and Matt had some amazing roles for his flame raisers, which I think helped for the number of shots or number of hits um, the it was Mike. Uh, oh, Evan was playing. What are you looking at? Evan was playing Tau. I mean, not Tau. Um, wait, maybe it was. Yeah, Evan was playing Tau, and he lost to Blood Angels. So oh, it was yes. Orcs he versus lost. It was Tau Blood yeah. Angels, Tau Harlequins. That's what it was. Yeah, we both Tau lost in round one. Yes, of course I would forget the guy who actually won the <laughs> event. <Yeah>. Indeed. <laughs> Um, Emperor's Children, it was just a bad matchup on bad terrain and a bad mission uh, with the orcs. And uh, I believe Porter made all his four up saves against <laughs> Tau, and then Blood Angels just murdered the other Tau. And it, all the matches were played on the the new Sisters of Battle terrain. So everybody had the same terrain for the uh, the top eight. Uh, uh, the next round was the Matt versus Sean. So that was demons versus orcs. And then it was the basically the ITC championship match between Mark Porter and Jack Harpshire. So Sean pulled it out. Literally, literally by a dice roll uh, against Matt, and then uh, Harpster beat Mike Porter, which basically clinched his uh, ITC championship uh, winning for that for the event for for the ITC, and then the finals was was Sean and Jack. And I believe Sean just made a mistake in his in how he wanted to play. He told us later afterwards that he wanted to play one way, but he decided to do another uh, play, and it just didn't work. And so Jack ended up winning both uh, LVO and ITC. No split title this year. Huh? I said no split title this year. <laughs> yeah. We haven't Was had one in a while. title last year? No. 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 It's been a few years. Mm-hmm. It's been a while, yeah. It's been a long while. I'm trying to think of the last time. No, I'm yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah, that's so... Different. There were some... Um, overall, we did have a few issues. Um, we also had the paint finals before I go into that uh, for the event. Luckily, this year, we were able to get uh, Duncan Rhodes to judge the make the final call for after we we cut it to the top 10 using a new rubric that everyone could actually see and i believe john you put out the uh paint scores for everybody yep. for, yeah that was all posted for... on the frontline gaming website so you can go and click <clears throat> the link and you can see everybody's scores in every category in the full what they scored in total okay cool uh, we should have the ITC scoring back up soon. We take They take it down every year right before LVO and then put it back up once everyone's kind of settled in. Um, so, um, and, and so uh, there were a few issues. Um, just overall thoughts. Uh, there were some terrain issues, uh, like we mentioned, this, like John mentioned, the uh, Sisters of Battle terrain was being used, which is a new terrain set, and was not in the packet, but it was kind of obvious what everything was, 
we did have some questions about it because uh, some parts were more than five inches tall. Uh, we made the decision to just say nothing's unchargeable. Mm-hmm. Uh, no matter, and then there's a, a corner on one of the pieces where tech, where you could hide almost like a magic box. We just told people that that was uh, impassable. You can't go inside it. So right. it didn't become, yeah. or it shouldn't have become a, too big of an issue. There was, um, yeah, I did adjudicate that because someone was like, "They're in here. They can't be charged." Because like, no, but the WTC ruling. It's like, oh, but you know, Bellacore's a monster. And I was like, well, that's not a magic box so you can't go in there it's impassable and they're like oh they're like what do, they're like what do we do i'm like well belcor can charge him he made the charge <laughs> look at that he killed them yeah. <laughs> you know like true you know, i true. mean yeah um uh ter- terrain we had some older pieces of terrain out there like by, by older i mean like Three or four years older, not like mm-hmm. a couple of years old. I think part of that was because of the number of tables we needed. They were bringing out whatever terrain they had, which you yeah, can understand, that, like because logistically having yeah, five hundred tables lot. ready for forty k is pretty tough, even for FLG. Right. I mean, I think let's be real. I think even Games Workshop would struggle to fill five hundred tables with their terrain. Right. Like on you know in any reasonable time frame. Surely they have the, you know, the ability to do so, but having the logistics, having that all shipped, ready to go, packed up, ready to be put down, I don't, I don't think they could just up and do that. Mm-hmm. Um, but I five hundred tables. <laughs> I think it's something to, uh, something to plan for. Like we, we have, yeah, we have our sheet of what to work on for next year already. So. Yeah, I mean, there's always room for improvement. It's never going to be like everything went off perfectly. There's all, you always oh, right. learn. Yeah, yeah. Every L, every LVO is a learning experience for us, right? There's always something we can do a little bit better. There's always something we could clarify more before the event, right? Like that's just yeah. normal, right? That's also we have we've had that approach since the beginning, which is why it gets better every year for the most part, because we never assume like, oh, it works. This is the system. It's always okay. Where can we get better? How can we improve? Right. Yep, that's true. We are. We are always trying to improve. <clears throat> On that note, we sent out a survey to every single person who attended the Warhammer 40k event to try to get your feedback so that we can improve what we're doing to make it better. Yeah. So if you yeah. if, if you went, check the email you registered for the event for. Check the email you signed into BCP with. It's got to have gone to one of those two. Right. Yeah. Or you right. just check your spam folders also. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that that feedback's super helpful. And again, I mean, I feel like for, again, almost a thousand players, this event ran extremely smoothly and was extremely successful. Definitely things we can do to improve that, right? Um, but, you know, it went really well. And hopefully next year will be bigger and it will go even better in comparison next year because we're, you know, taking the time now to learn what can we do to cut off certain issues of the past, <laughs> Mm-hmm. Yeah. The other issue, um, at least from what we already talk, touched on a little bit, is the talking it out. But in addition to that, there's the uh, scoring at the end. Of, scoring when time is called. Yeah. Because sometimes, uh, depending on the TO, you have some places that will just score it as is. You, like the second player doesn't get to score at the end of the turn as if it was turn five. Which technically is raw, because you're only on turn three, not turn five. I tend to allow it because they didn't get their full five turns mm-hmm. where they normally would score in turn five. Mm-hmm. So well, it's just, just it punishes. It's it's something we just need to clarify and and kind of make official, probably. Jim. Yeah, that way we I know it's, it's it's something to have in writing because you know the reason end of turn or bottom of turn scoring is different turn five as gw understood that going first was so powerful in this edition with how deadly it is that you needed a tangible reason to go second which is cool i get to score at the end of my turn on turn five if you take that away because the game didn't end you know in turn five it just makes going first that much more strong right so it's just you know it's 
I think it's, while raw, it's yes, do this. I think it's in the spirit of the intent of the rule and the design of, no, whatever is the last turn of the game, you know, whoever went second should be able to score at the bottom of their turn. <laughs> yeah, and, yeah, and like easy. Airborne says, it, using the clock, uh, it's funny because a lot of people are like, no, nah, we should be okay, and then they, you know, then they have, then they don't only go to turn three and <laughs> Yeah. And no issues come up because they didn't go the full five turns. But but even with the clock, you know, it, especially when it gets down to both sides being below five minutes, they should be able to score the, that last turn, whichever turn they're on, as is as if it was the fifth turn. So right. they can they can score at the bottom. Um, that's just something that just needs to be put in somewhere in writing, like Danny said. So people have something to point to when they see when they want to score as if it was the bottom of five. Um, I think terrain talking it out were the, were the big things and just um, uh, just making sure uh, everything gets wrapped up in, in a nice tidy bow. Uh, common questions: the one I heard the most of, and this is, uh, I believe, Kr Quinn or Airborne said that they seem to be a lot more newer people, new players at the tournament, and that like it was their first big tournament or or um, major mm-hmm. ever. Because I yeah. got a lot of questions regarding whether a unit can still consolidate or pile in after making a charge when the when the targeted unit is destroyed so right i got a lot of those uh, I don't, like i said i only got one question about the wdc wall wall uh, uh ruling and it's funny because it was a moot point because the ruling mentions that it's only effective for infantry beasts and swarms and they wanted to use a monster to try to go through the wall nah. so make sure to yeah, read no. that ruling uh before you try to do stuff, it kind of helps. It saves me a long walk. Um, uh, most of the other stuff was like Danny mentioned, like terrain questions. How is this played? This this terrain isn't in the packet, which is a common question throughout the season, not just LVO, because yep, sometimes there'll true. be something extra, like a billboard or a crate that wasn't in the pack, yep. and they want to know how to play it. Mm-hmm. People are very literal. <laughs> yes, they are. So, hopefully, hopefully yeah, it, it, there was uh, there wasn't like a common thread of questions, but there was a lot mm-hmm. of terrain stuff. So, yeah. Well, yeah. I think part of it is because of the the terrain that we used uh, for the event. Probably, yeah. but but for me, it was the the pile in and consolidate question happened came up a lot. Yep. Um, I think Danny, you got a like a fight first, fight last type of questions, or that one of the other judges. Um, he had a wander off. Mm. I don't have the cam. I don't have the uh, my <laughs> show on. I'm too busy looking at the the Twitch chat. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Um, <laughs> there was a lot of the fights first, fights last stuff, like a ton of it. But that's just because that's always been a thing. Like, that's always been something that people just can't seem to wrap their heads around. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, th- there's only so much you can do about that. I don't know. Yeah. Like, we, I mean, again, once we get the questionnaire, the questionnaires in and see mm-hmm. what, uh, see what, uh, what people think and, and what, how they think the game should be improved. Uh, or at least LVO, it should help us out figure out what to do and for next year, because we're already working on next year. So always uh, other issues. <laughs> always working on next year. Uh, I think the other thing, and this happens every tournament, not necessarily LVO, is the uh, how do I describe it the the comments of or people telling us what happened after the fact whether it's later that evening or the next day or a week later of well this happened to me and my first question is always what did you call a judge over nine times out of ten it's a no right so just like after every tournament I just reiterate that you should be if you have any issues or problems you guys need to call a judge over. Don't be afraid to call a judge over. 
you know. Yeah. There's still, I think, a stigma for a lot of people. Well, I think so, too, yeah. Of, yeah, with calling a judge over, that makes you like a jerk or a power gamer or, or whatever. Yeah, no. But. It doesn't. But you, you should, you shouldn't be afraid to do that, especially if you're not understanding something. And you just want, yeah. and your opponent's not willing to explain it or can't explain it properly, maybe. Probably can't, yeah. Right. Well, there's, there's been times where, where where I come over and they're trying to explain it and then I'm able to explain it a little bit better or to maybe to f explain it in a way for their opponent to understand it better. Uh, yeah, I guess that's fair. Uh, especially because cause LVO attracts people from outside the United States. Um, yeah, that's a good point. And there's mm -hmm. that cultural or language difference and, you know, and it might help, so... Even even at your local tournaments, don't be afraid to, to talk to the, the judges that are help, not hurt, so, supposed to anyway. Um, and I, but the, it, that one's a constant. It's a constant struggle for judges, especially when people will come afterwards, and especially when they start to complain about an event. Yes, true. You know, and and I I get it. You want to vent, and you want to vent in your own, especially event among your friends, whether it's you know your team Discord or. A Patreon Discord or or someplace more or less private, but it doesn't help the situation if the judges or the judge doesn't know what's going on, especially when you're at the event. Yeah, uh, it I doesn't mean, help. Get, it doesn't get anything resolved because the judges don't know that there's a problem if you don't tell them. It also brings up the idea of you know if you are or people who do you know vent even if they're not really trying to like get any action they're just trying to express maybe frustration mm -hmm. when don't you know then members of their team or their patreon they're in are suddenly like up in arms about like oh hey i heard this happen and blah 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 it's like don't be mad for other people right like if someone's upset about something let them speak and let them express themselves but don't you know necessarily champion somebody's yeah. grievances for them right not like, to mention like if you're in a Discord that's closed off to the public and you're talking trash in that Discord, I'm going to just assume that you're not telling the truth. Because that person doesn't have the possibility to come in and defend themselves. They can't say their side of things. You are free in a private Discord that only certain people are a part of to say whatever you want without repercussions. And... If we've learned anything on the internet in the last 23 years, <laughs> it's that if you have unfettered access to say whatever you want with no consequence, people are going to say all kinds of stuff that is simply not true. So, uh, I, and I'm part of some discords that are closed off, like our team discord. Um, yeah. I've, I'm part of one discord where you have to pay uh, as part of a Patreon. And I got to tell you, I don't believe... The majority of what some people say when they are ranting and raving about something. Because, right. I'm sorry, but you're not giving the other side the chance to say anything. So, I mean, yeah, everybody should take what they read in Discord servers with a grain of salt. Especially if it's one that's not public. Yeah, especially if someone can't defend themselves or, or at least explain the, their, their version of the of whatever happened. Yep. It's 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 whatever. I mean you're always <laughs> gonna have you've always had that. I mean even even before before uh you know, before Discord and Facebook groups, the the Yahoo groups, before that Yeah, you know, there the chat rooms, there's and before that there was just your circle of friends, you know. Forty K was Daka Daka. Geo Cities, baby. Why do you have to bring that name up? Because because Daka Daka had a place where like if you like paid the money and were a subscriber, you got access to your own channels. I know. And then, like... I remember. Then you had an area where, like, the people in those channels could talk trash about the people, the plebs, in the regular channels. <laughs> I mean, come on. It's a, that's, a, that's essentially what Discord has done. Discord has yes, made right. it so that I can lose a game, be mad about it, go and complain about why I lost the game, and all I gotta do is hope that, like, screenshots don't get sent to my opponent. <laughs> <laughs> Good old screenshots. We see those every so often. They're fun. I mean, come on. 
it, it, it's it's a little ridiculous. And then to go to bat for other people who, like, it's their fight to fight. Yeah, let them fight it. If they're really, I mean, if, if a person really feels that strongly that they were slighted or wronged, they would publicly engage in that discourse, right? And invite yeah. the counter perspective and invite the heat that comes with, you know, publicly being like, this person screwed me or the, you know, the judges, blah, 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 right? Like they would be aggrieved enough to take the risk of getting into that kind of drama in a, in a public venue. And if they're not, then they're probably not all that pissed about it, <laughs> right? Or it's yeah. actually not that big of a deal. I mean, we had someone contact us about the, about one of their games, uh, you know, um, so it's not that hard to get a hold of us if you want to discuss it. And I'm more than willing to discuss it. Um, or at least give my version of what should or would have would have happened. I can't I, I don't have the authority to like oh. change anything for you, but if if people want to talk about their game, I can give you the perspective and, and the judge's perspective on, on what was supposed to happen if it didn't happen. You know, or and you know, and I've I've judged and refereed a lot of events. So I'm I'm actually going this Saturday to referee a soccer game again, <laughs> again because apparently I'm a glutton for punishment. Um, apparently so. So yeah, I've I've been through all that, I, and if anything, I'm uh, I'm more than happy to listen and, and discuss. You know, one what happened and what how it could be resolved or for in the future. So. I may not be able to fix it, but I can certainly um, hopefully remedy it. Yeah. Best of our ability, so. Our, John died, which means our stream died. Well, you don't need to mention that because we can still talk and still finish the I know. show. I know, but for maybe some of our viewers who are like the, the like three who are watching the show and like Ish, who's now messaging me. I know. I see. Oh, John's internet went out again. That's because John doesn't pay his bills. Yeah, well, maybe. I mean, Vegas is expensive. <laughs> it certainly is. Anywho, what else do we got? Uh, yeah. So, sure. other than that. Um, those are the general thoughts and, and if anybody does have any want to ask questions or whatever my email is on literally almost every every uh, FLG packet FLG piece of paper piece of paper out there <laughs> yeah head judge Adam Solis uh, especially if you want uh, uh, conversions approved but um, we don't have any listener questions. Uh, like Danny said, the stream seems to have uh, shut off. So, uh, Didn't we want to announce something? Because I did get super awesome, amazing, beautiful news. Uh, John decided to come back, and which ruins my recording stuff, which means I have to do extra work. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I started the stream again, at least. Oh, we're back. <laughs> Yeah, we're back. Do we have questions? That from means the stream? after watching the... <laughs> questions from the stream before Adam complains more. I wasn't complaining. I was just talking about we we're going to start a GoFundMe for you, John, so you can have internet. I don't understand what the deal with Spectrum is today. This is the third outage today. I've had Spectrum, but it's been fine. It's just this area because I'll get a text message: "Hey, there's an outage in your area. It's going to come back at some point." Which is super. You got to live in a better area, John. I mean, you know, I, I'm a teacher in California. What do you want? Yeah. <laughs> I, gotta, like, right. I gotta live where, wherever I'm able to. <laughs> I don't have a lot of choices here. So, what was the last thing you guys talked about? Nothing. We're just we're just they were they were just talking about how there's no questions for no questions from the Patreon. Oh, okay. And it appears to be. None Somebody the... asked our favorite food we ate in Vegas, and we, we already talked the, about that. The one, but then like, so I have a funny story about this. Oh. So, all three nights I was there, if 
Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, mm -hmm. I ate steak. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> so the first night good. we went to, you know, Jose Andres and then Bizarre Meats. And then the second night, I ended up at the Rio Steakhouse with Jeff and Alan, Derek and his wife, and Natalie. Okay. And I was a little bit like, uh, I know what the Rio's like. <laughs> but the steakhouse was actually really good. Natalie and I got a bone in ribeye up there that was awesome. So I had that. The Sunday night, Natalie and I got tickets to see Absinthe, the Cirque du Soleil that's at um, Caesars. And if right, anybody exactly. wants to go, they should go to that one. It's hilarious because it's uh, like a combo of Cirque du Soleil and raunchy comedy show. Nice. <laughs> like super raunchy comedy show. It was hilarious. And uh, so before that, we went to La Mia Moore or whatever at the Paris. Oh, and yeah. We've eaten there. We've eaten there, yeah. Natalie got the sea bass like special, and I should have done that too, because I got a steak. And by that point, I don't know if it was because it was my third steak, or because nothing <laughs> can live up to a bone and ribeye from an actual steakhouse or bizarre meats. I was just like, meh. <laughs> right. This is fine. It's okay. But my favorite thing about the food at LVO was I ate steaks three nights in a row. That's there you go. pretty good. That's never a bad thing. And then I have to make sure I don't get my cholesterol checked for a month. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of shredded wheat yeah <laughs> I know right yeah, exactly yeah but there were no other uh, listener questions uh, in the chat because there's only two people and one of them is me now uh, nothing on Facebook or Patreon do 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 uh, but I think that's it for our OVO recap. Yeah. Successful event. Once again, the largest Warhammer 40k tournament in the world, and now the largest Asia Sigmar tournament in the world, too. Yeah. Mm, must be doing something right. Yeah, uh, right? That's got to be it. So, real quick, uh, don't forget we have the podcast Grand Alliance, which includes TFG Radio, of course. And party at the Alpine All Points mm -hmm. if you like Age of Sigmar mm -hmm. with uh, Dayton, Dayton and his yeah. rowdy bunch. From what I hear from the awards mm -hmm. story show, stage. <laughs> yeah, yes. that was not appreciated by a number of people. Yeah, well, forty k players are a little dour. Um, the Age of Sigmar community seems to think it was amazing. Um, uh, well, it is grim dark. <laughs> and true. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure their LVO recap because two of them, two of the three were there, so I'm sure okay. there will be a good recap soon. Um, they all had to fly back to Canada, eh? so you know <laughs> it's going to yeah. take a little bit of time. Uh, uh, then we, there is the Flying Monkey Wargaming Podcast, who just released their uh, LVO episode, and then there is Pod Save the Imperium, which should mm -hmm. have a new episode up soon. Tomorrow. By the time this this by the time this podcast airs, that uh, Pod Save the Imperium should be uh, yes. out. And I think I have it set up so that <clears throat> if you prefer to listen to things on YouTube, I think I have it set up that it'll populate to the uh, Pod Save the Imperium YouTube channel now. Okay. That sounds like so you know. magic. Mm -hmm. It's so. just a Libsyn thing. I know. I saw it as an option and I was like, ooh, I think <laughs> I can make it do that. I yeah. bet I can do that. Uh, also, we have our sponsors, uh, Hammerhead Games. Just go to hammerheadgames.net uh, to see all their stuff on sale. And also go to the Shark Tank, that he where he usually posts what's come in uh, to the store. And that's up for sale. And they, uh, they do have a website they'll deliver anywhere. And then also our main sponsor, which is Gameology, ma mainly the Gameology Pasadena store. Just yep. go to GameologyGames.com, and they also have uh, can ship anywhere. More importantly, uh, with the with World Eaters coming out, Danny's wet is Whoa. wet with excitement. Sure, and I am. As a, and thankfully, thanks to Gameology, Gameology Pasadena, they mm -hmm. dis, they've decided to donate an Angron model as a giveaway. Yeah. Right. So we're going to give that actually to our Patreon members. And if you want to be a Patreon member for as little as $1 a month, average is 5 uh, just go to Patreon and just look up TFG Radio and it'll uh, 
uh, Get yourselves in that sweet anger on Ravel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, get in the Ravel. Uh, uh, when do you want to give it away, Danny? Uh, next show. Oh, my God. What? Uh, we should have it by next day. We'll see. All right. Well, we'll it's do... not by next show. No, it's... Well, they come out. They come out next weekend, not this weekend. Next weekend, yeah, that's yeah, every two weekends. Or every two weeks, we do this show. Well, we'll see how the allocation goes. Let's put it so. Fair enough. All right. Well, still we'll, that we'll aim for next show. We'll Under promise, overperform. Show. We'll get it yeah. to you one day. Yep. We'll You'll get you an Angron March. eventually. Uh, mm-hmm. So Danny and I are both building world leader armies. Hell yeah! Uh, it Hell seems yeah. like. We've mentioned it before how how Southern California seems to be a chaos centric region. It is for sure. So there are a number of people that are quote unquote building a world leader's army. We'll see how many of them actually go through with it. Hmm. I know one person that probably that wants to, but probably won't, because he started every army that GW has put out, and it has not finished any of them. <laughs> So I he think, has a lot of half-built armies. I think all gaming groups know somebody like that, right? Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Uh, we also have Battle for LA coming out on April 1st and 2nd. Tickets are on sale now, if you haven't bought already. Um, we're using the new Arxa Omen. Currently, the prize is a ticket for Best General is a ticket to SoCal Open. So hopefully if you're in the L.A. area, L.A., Vegas, Utah area, just... Uh, Arizona. And, uh, that might be a little far, but sure. Northern Mexico. <laughs> hey, that'd be great. Okay, well. Hawaii. <laughs> that might be a stretch. Oh. We're the closest for Hawaii to get shout to. Out to uh, shout out to Kelsey. <laughs> LAX, <laughs> we're the closest. Speaking Battle of Hawaii, shout LA. out to Kelsey, right? Yeah, yeah. To... No, we get guys from Arizona sometimes for Battle and Hammer. Yeah, sometimes. Once in yeah. a while. I already bought my ticket. Battle for LA. John, I, I think play. Danny you're going to play? I'm going to play, yeah. I'm going to play my World Eaters, baby. I'm going to so win a SoCal done. Open ticket, baby. Done. So I'm going to pay for one this year. <laughs> Which is funny, because I can't be there this year, so. <laughs> what? I'll be in Mexico. By oh, choice. Oh, that's right. Your Mexico trip. Well, sort of by choice kind of have to go a little uh, the uh the next event everyone will see me at that's not local that's not that's not southern california will be at cherokee open tickets already i believe they're already sold out uh for 40k i will be there once again uh that is later this month which is only three weeks away <laughs> god <laughs> And literally a month after that, uh, I'm 99% sure I'll be judging Adepticon. But, uh, Congratulations on that. I won't know for another day or two until we can work the details out, but we'll see. All you got to do is put a Nova in your hat and a I've GW done Nova, event in your I've hat. done Nova already. I did their invitation. Oh, that's right. You just need to put a GW event in your little cap and you'll have done them all. We'll talk about that off air. Oh, my feelings on that. You can put that. that feather in your cap, and <laughs> you can be the new Justin Curtis. Because he's too short. Ball. I mean, I said new. I didn't say same or tall. I'm too short and too fat. <laughs> I'm like two Justin Curtises cut in half. Yeah, he's pretty thin. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. But uh, well, I'll, uh, by the next show, I should have more information about, about Adepticon, so... I'm excited What's, to go. You, if I do go, I'm excited because I've never been, and I actually wanted to go back in 2020 when they canceled the first one for COVID. Yeah. I was supposed to go for like, I think one of the team events, but I also wanted to go because I wanted to check out the historical stuff. So, mm-hmm. oh well, I probably check it out still. Uh, Danny, do you know what you're going to play at Battle for LA? He said World Eaters. World Eaters. He yeah, said I'm Eaters. playing. I'm playing World Eaters. My goal for 2023 is any event I go to, whether it's an RTT, GT, whatever, is going to be with World Eaters. That's yeah. just what I'm going to do for 23. <laughs> going for that best ITC World Eaters? <laughs> I doubt it, but I will at least, you know, I'll at least try. be consistent this year. Yeah, yeah. at least yeah. try. Yeah, uh, Danny, any any last words for tonight? Uh, it's, it's Kelsey, right? Like, um, who is taking all the pictures and 
you know, from Hawaii mm-hmm. who gave thanks. So shout outs to him because his pictures yeah. were awesome. And uh, the treats we got too were um, really yummy. Those apple things were like phenomenal. Yeah. So oh, man, I I'm just glad those. he took good pictures. They were so good. They I were know, so I good, man. The they were sitting there on the stage at one point and so was like, what is this? Should we throw it down? I'm like, do not throw those out. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't even have any. <laughs> forgot. John, any last words for uh, tonight? Yeah. Fill out your survey. Fill we can't. Out your we survey. can't make the event better if we don't know what you want us to make better. You're telling me screaming into the void that is the internet nope. doesn't work. Screaming into the void, screaming into your private Discord servers, not going to do anything. Literally, will do nothing. If I can't see your feedback. I can't put your feedback into my notes. And believe it or not, we have a notes document after every LVO. Things we want to do different. Things we want to improve. Stuff we got heard from people. Yeah. We, we constantly work to do it. So fill out the survey because that's one of the tools we can actually use. And it shows us good data. But the more people that fill it out, the better the data is. Yeah. I believe, John, you got my note in regards to how, make, how to make LVO better. Yeah, but I have to go. <laughs> me staying home isn't an option that wasn't my suggestion so that was somebody else's suggestion probably <laughs> you know what my suggestion was because you said you wanted to punch me in the face yes which, I still which do. is a common response to <laughs> to that <laughs> statement <laughs> yes that particular statement yes it will always make me want to punch you in the mouth <laughs> Right that's now. why I do it over the internet. That's I assume why. <laughs> All right. What are your last get, words? Uh, I hope everybody had a good time. Most people seem to have have had have had a good time. Yes. But uh, thanks to everybody who we met at LVO, especially um, met a lot of people, especially people we talked to over the internet. Uh, and over Discord and all the different communication apps that are out there. But uh, thank you, everybody, for listening. Thanks, everybody, again, for saying hi, how much they enjoy the show. Thank you for listening for this episode. And uh, we should see you in a couple weeks. Good night, and have a pleasant tomorrow. Laters. See ya.